everyone, I'm Jamie Little. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome to today's very special No One Runs on Empty virtual fundraising event hosted by the Michael Andretti Foundation and the George Four Foundation and presented to you by Brightmark. Well, we have lots in store for you today. With all of the funds generated from today's event benefiting an amazing organization right here in Indianapolis, Gleaners Food Bank and its No One Runs on Empty campaign. And here's how you can help. From this event page, you can simply make a direct donation or you can click on the items tab on this page to bid on all the amazing auction items we have available to you today. The list is endless. We have an exclusive VIP IndyCar race weekend experience, New York Yankees collectibles, autograph memorabilia, gift certificates, a customized work of art from legendary motorsports artist Bill Patterson, and so much more. Again, all you have to do is click the items tab on this page to see everything that is available. There is truly something for everyone. The auction closes at the end of this program, so once you find something you like, hurry up and place your bid. And just in case you needed some more motivation to support this great cause, let's join Andretti Autosport driver James Hinchcliffe as he takes a private tour of Gleaner's Food Bank with company CEO John Elliott. Hey guys, James Hinchcliffe here, and I'm at the Gleaners Food Bank in Indianapolis, and today we're going to get a behind-the-scenes tour of the facility here from President and CEO John Elliott. And on top of learning what they do and how they do it, we're also going to get an inside look at how Gleaners is really helping the community here in Indianapolis, and also, very importantly, how your contributions are helping close the meal gap here in town. So let's go take a look. Well, hello, John. James, welcome. The, yeah, the handshakes yeah. I have to wait <laughs> the, 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 times, the 2020 but, uh, handshake, yeah. So, welcome to Gleaners. Thank you so much for having me. Really excited for the yeah. tour. And I'll take you on a tour, but I thought if we want to take just a minute, I can tell you a little bit about what Gleaners does. That'll be perfect. Because I find a lot of people know about our traditional food bank role, but there's more to Gleaners than that. Okay. As a food bank, we're part of Feeding America, one of 200 food banks in the country, and every county in the U.S. is assigned to a food bank. Gleaners, the food bank, pre-pandemic used four distribution channels. Brick and mortar food pantries and community centers and so on, where there's an actual location to distribute from. Right, and now you've got mobile units And then as well. mobile pantries, yeah. where we go out and set up in a parking lot, like we did at the Motor Speedway. Right. And then we also have pantries inside schools. Right. So school-based pantries and back sack locations where we would use, we were using 243 schools to distribute back sacks for kids over the weekend. And that's why we saw food lines more than double across the 21 counties. In most places in Marion County, we're doing four or five times the number of households we were the same weeks last wow. year. Wow, that's a so huge increase. It's in huge. Day. So we also do three other things at okay. this facility. We're a reclamation site for Kroger, so surplus food and non-food from Kroger stores in Indiana and Illinois are, are sent here by the semi-load and then they're sorted. Okay. And most of it we're allowed to donate into the hunger relief system. Right. Food and non-food, you know. But then some goes back to vendors or is discarded. And that brings quite a bit into the system. For sure. We also work as, with our Feeding America National Office and respond to disaster relief. Prior to spring of 2017, we were getting zero pounds of fresh produce straight really? from the farm. Right. We just finished fiscal 2020 with almost 40,000 pounds That's of incredible. fresh produce. Because I mean, I read, I mean. Sorry, 40 million pounds. 40 million pounds. Yeah. My math's That's off unreal. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> from zero to 40 million pounds of fresh produce is a huge impact, but it's not just a, it's about the quantity of produce. We're really pushing hard for healthier, more nutritious food. Of course. We had to convert because of the health protocols of the pandemic to no contact drive through So you're seeing... So the drive through system didn't exist pre-pandemic? No. Okay. No. no. And even our mobile pantries that are out in parking lots were set up for them to walk around the gleaner's truck at tables and pick up food. Right. Where they can choose what they want. Incredible. So you want to take a walk and see some food? Let's do it. All right. So this, this we stage a little bit of food massive. here, what I would call fast movers. Okay. 
where the food pantries that come, we also use that chute for other things. So food pantries, some come pick up their food from us, yep. some we deliver to, and then some larger ones, their trucks back and forth. So we're using that for orders. So we're picking or pulling orders for pantries, putting them at the numbered stops out in the chute and off they go. Amazing. We're really focused on business efficiency and operating this at industry standards and saving money any way we can right. on non-food costs Right. so we have more money to spend on the food. Of course. And there you go. When you, when you donate money, you're looking at what it's buying right here. The yep. pallets of food yep. helping people. So how big is this facility? What are we looking at square footage? It's uh, 300,000 square feet. Not small. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, I had no it's idea. It's the second largest uh, building in the Feed America Network. Pull another string. Another one? Oh, sure. My lucky day. Yeah. I'm going to get these installed at the house. And so like I see here, dental kits. So it's not even just food you're helping. Yeah, we do more non-food than people would realize. And, and you know, when you think about how many distribution centers there are in Indiana, you know, Kroger has food and non-food facilities in the state. Walmart does. CVS and Walgreens are nearby. Target. You know, all of those retailers, they're donating more and more non-food. And if a family can't afford to buy food, if they're struggling with that, they're probably struggling to buy toiletries and hygiene and household cleaning items. You know, in the pandemic, they need the same things we do. Yeah. So any way we can save them money, we'll do it. We've seen such generosity. That's incredible. We really it's, have. That's the kind of teamwork in the community yeah. you need to see, right? Yeah. People helping people. Well, I may be a little biased as a native Hoosier, but I do think, you know, we really do tend to rally together. Yeah. When you sure. need help, and there's, and maybe that happens in other places too. I just like to think right. it's special <laughs> here. You know. It happens better here. Yes, that's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. That's what I mean. I mean, how many millions of of meals do you distribute a year? Well, we have not, uh, we've got some earlier unaudited numbers. Right. Um, but it looks like we did about 87 million pounds of food, fiscal 20. That's incredible. Yeah. So, so a bit of a busy year for you guys. So, yeah, you know, that, that's the sort of thing that gets you an extra bonus at a company, <laughs> yeah. right? You know, but. For sure. But we get something more valuable, which is knowing we fed that many more people. Of course. But that's all that means we need that many more donations. Yeah. But it means we're going to need a lot going. more of these carrots, right? We need more carrots. We need more potatoes. We need more everything. And so who's eligible? How do you determine? You know, it's very much an honor system. There you go. You know, I mean, there are expectations and we'll post those and, but people declare, it's self-declared need. Right. But that's incredible though. It's incredible yeah. that anybody that feels they need it can just come. Yeah. There's no yeah, it's... vetting process. There's no application. Well, if, if this is something you need, you come and you, you get help. I really want it to be more of a, a, a welcoming, respectful customer experience where we do the best we can to help help the family with the food. And our new strategic plan is also about partnering with other organizations so we can try to help these families with the other challenges. Right. It's very, very rare that somebody's only dealing with hunger. Because I gotta think one of the big challenges for you guys is just letting people know that you exist. Yeah. You know, there's a lot yeah. of people that wanna be charitable and wanna to, want to right. donate, but might not know this is even an option. Right. And I feel like Hopefully, you find that this and partnership is helping get the name out there. Man. And the big, the big need now is obviously we're going to continue to have a financial need over the next several years because it will take several years for families to recover. Well, John, thank you so much for the tour. I mean, it's an incredible facility, an incredible mission. What yep. you guys are doing here is yep. just, uh, it's, it's blown away. I had no idea this was kind of in my backyard uh, right. in a sense. So, uh, proud to be a, a kind of suppl a supplanted Hoosier yep. and uh, proud to be part of this cause. And guys, this all happens because of you. This all happens from donations, whether they're financial, donating your time, come volunteer, you know, bid on the items like we talked about. And at the end of the day, they're here, they're trying to close the meal gap and you guys can be a big part of that. So please help out and thanks for watching.
This is a potato. This particular potato was raised in the Midwest by Craig. Potatoes have inspired things like fries, tots, competitions, and toys. One potato has roughly 160 calories. A calorie measures the amount of fuel humans need to function. This is Ruby. Ruby loves potatoes, but her family doesn't have money for the supermarket, so she'll have to wait to have energy. The potato not yet purchased is subsequently gleaned from the store. All the gleaned food comes to this food bank where volunteers help organize and redistribute it. This is the largest food bank in Indiana. It's called Gleaners. Now the potato from Craig that didn't sell at the market and was collected by gleaners is combined with other food and given to families in need, like Ruby's. The potato gives Ruby the fuel she needs to function and grow up without hunger. This potato is just one of the tens of thousands of food items gleaners distribute in a day. Ruby is just one of the one million people who need food every day in Indiana. Gleaners needs your help. Go to gleaners.org and click donate now. Every food is critical for our hungry neighbors. Success these days is measured not just by the number of meals or the number of pounds of food, but what's that nutritious variety we can offer them. And fresh, nutritious staple items like a potato forms the foundation of a meal that we can build on with other donations. There's a role to play for corporate partners far more than you might think. You may not realize what a large and complicated organization this is, particularly when you think about our regional co-op role, our role in feeding 21 Indiana counties, our natural disaster response, and the retail store reclamation activity. So whether you're an engineer, you're an educator, you're an accountant, you're in operations, whatever role you play, I guarantee we can find a way to match your skills and your expertise with challenges facing leaders. It's not acceptable in this Hoosier state that we have a 150 million meal a year gap. And that was before the COVID-19 pandemic. We think that meal gap may as much as doubled, and that's not acceptable. Because the counties the Gleaner serves, including the capital city and metro area, we're responsible for filling about one third of that gap, or 53 million meals pre-COVID. That's a daunting task, but we can do it with the right help. To help us close that meal gap, Go to gleaners.org slash no one runs on empty. Hey everybody, Bill Patterson here in my studio in South Texas. Excited to be back painting for the Michael Andretti Foundation this year with the George Four Foundation producing a painting that we're going to auction off to benefit the Gleaners Food Bank of Indiana. Excited about that. I've been painting uh, with the Michael Andretti Foundation for, I think it's got to be, it's over 15 years anyway, and I'm excited to be back. I'm honored to be asked every year to come back and paint. Tonight I'm going to try something I've never tried before. I've worked it out of my head. I'm going to be working this canvas. It's uh, 60 by 30, so, but I'm excited about my idea for it. Something very different, something I can't really do in a setting like we've had in the past. I think with that I'll get going. So this is a new way of doing a painting I have never attempted before. I swear, swear to myself that if this painting didn't turn out as I had hoped, it would never see the light of day, but I'm thrilled with the results. Lots and lots and lots of layers of color, and uh, I fought this painting a couple of times, but then I slowed down and let the painting tell me what it wanted, and I, I'm really pleased with the results, and the process was so much fun. Definitely want to do more of these. I'm excited to be part of the venue tonight, excited that this piece could uh, make some great money for a great cause, and as always, thanks to the Michael Andretti Foundation for letting me come in and, and participate. This piece, finished piece, yeah, I'm pretty good, huh? Uh, this piece is 5 feet wide, 60 inches wide by 30 inches tall, so it's a 2 to 1 ratio. I am going to wait for the paint to dry, and then I'll be putting a heavy coat of clear uh, varnish on it that'll really pop the texture and the color. Uh, there's lots and lots of layers and lots and lots of texture. It's some great color that just kind of the whole thing kind of shimmers. Uh, I'm really excited about the finished product. I uh, hope you are too. Hope it'll make some great money for a great cause. Wish I was there. Wish we could do this in person and hopefully we'll, we will be doing that exact thing next year. In the meantime, I'm excited to help make some great money for a great cause. Thanks everybody. Have a great night. Bye.
Welcome back to the program. I'm now joined by Michael Andretti and George Steinbrenner the fourth. Welcome, gentlemen. A little bit different this year. It's interesting to see where times are going, and uh, you know we appreciate everybody coming and watching this. I know it's a little bit different than you know we used to do these things like at my father's winery and Napa and things like that. But uh, unfortunately, those those days are gone for the moment. But uh, you know we appreciate everybody coming in. Hopefully, going to spend a lot of money, buy a lot of cool stuff that we have uh, on the auction. Absolutely, that's that's the great thing. There's still some great auction items, and uh, I want to ask you both about Gleaners Food Bank. We know in Indianapolis, it, what they do for the community is huge. But how have you guys been touched? Tell me your experience, Michael. I'll start with you. When we first went down there and visit, visited their facility, it was amazing to see what they do out of that one facility. I think they said something like they're putting out like one and a half million meals a week. You know, I mean, that's incredible. Just here in Indianapolis and what they do and how they help the community is amazing. Um, their operation's amazing, the way it's all set up. It's, it's almost like a race team, you know, everybody's got their job and, and, and all that stuff. So it's uh, uh, really proud to be associated with them. Um, it's great for us to have a partner like that that's uh, right here in our backyard that we can just give back to the community that's been so great, you know, to us. Absolutely, and George, in your experience? Just going down there uh, when we were first setting this partnership up uh, on the race team side, uh, just seeing how they operate and how many people they touch, especially in this time, you know, when food insecurity is so much higher than it has been in decades, uh, for them to be able to, to do what they do and do what they do so successfully and, and the partnerships they have with local suppliers and the Indianapolis community that really come together and, and help try to, to solve this food insecurity problem and, and something that we're really, really thankful we get to be a part of, of, of helping. Yeah, I can't imagine another year bigger where more families are in need like this year. Well, the Michael Andretti Foundation has been around a long time, but the George Four Foundation is something new. What was the motivation behind starting your own foundation? I thought um, forming my own foundation was a good way to branch out uh, not only my family's effort, but my own personal effort uh, into a new community. Uh, the New York City community and the Tampa community uh, we've been working in for decades, but the Indianapolis community is a new venture in, in trying to make lives better uh, in this community that I've called home for four years. And it has been home for four years. We see you down there on the timing stand for Colton Herta. How has your experience been and, and what started it all for you? Uh, my experience in racing really started when I was very young. Uh, my cousin Tony Renna was an IndyCar driver in the early 2000s. My uncle Chris Simmons has been an engineer in IndyCar for two decades now and so uh, just growing up going to races, going to more and more every year and growing this love for the sport, this passion and uh, being able to partner with Michael and Indy Lights in, in 2017 with Colton uh, and then growing it now to a race winning IndyCar program has been a really cool journey and something that uh, thankfully we're looking to, to continue in the future. So George, we see you on the timing stand every week. You're very invested. What exactly are you doing? What is your kind of role on race weekends? So uh, I've been fortunate uh, the last two years to work with uh, a really good team on the pit stand. Uh, something that has always interested me so much is race strategy, uh, trying to figure out uh, how to get the car from start to finish in the fastest possible way. And that involves uh, what tires put on when, what tires do you start the race on, all that stuff. So. Got a great team with Brian Barnhart, Nathan O'Rourke, Brian Page on the stand, and we work really well together. Uh, and we we had a great chemistry, and we feel like we made a lot of good decisions that uh, that got us to where we needed to be to finish third in the championship. Along obviously, alongside Colton's great driving. Um, so that's sort of where I've been able to carve my niche of of, of my passion in the sport, specifically uh, being on the you know how to make the car go faster from the pit stand. That's awesome. And for you, I mean, Michael, first off, just from a team owner perspective, what you guys had to go through this year with COVID and starting and stopping, and what was all of that like for you? Uh, it was a bit tough, you know, I think, but it, you know, it's no different than everybody, I think, uh, in the world right now. Um, but, uh, you know, we made it through it. I think uh, there's a lot of things we learned going through it that are probably gonna help us make us stronger in the future. Um, but, uh, you know, we made it, got through the year. Hopefully uh, when we get into next year, we won't have to worry about it. Hopefully by then we'll have a vaccine and all that. And uh, you know, we can just focus 100% just on the racing. All right, so the season is over, but we're in the race shop and things are happening like it is race yeah. season. What does your off season look like? 
Oh, it's flat out. The guys are working flat out, you know, uh, working on the cars, tearing them down and going through every little piece. Uh, then we got a lot of programs like wind tunnel testing, um, shaker rig testing, gearbox testing, all the normal stuff. So, you know, there's, there's no rest here. I mean, everybody's flat out. Uh, they'll be flat out until we get the cars back on the racetrack uh, for St. Pete. How about you, George? You wide open working with the team in the off season? No downtime for you? You know, as Michael said, the guys on the shop floor are working tirelessly to you know, make sure that when St. Pete comes around that every single nook and cranny has been checked and, and everything's optimized to its fullest potential. And, and also the guys upstairs at the shop here are working commercially to try and find money to, to make sure that these, these five cars are going to run, uh, run as well as they can with, with the, the sponsors coming on board. So uh, it re there really is no off-season in racing. You know, we might not be on track, but we're, we're working every day. So it's, it's part of the job. And Michael, what's this partnership been like for you having George so involved and seeing a driver like Colton be able to climb the ranks and do so well in IndyCar? I think it's been great. I mean, at first it was great to get the Steinbrenners to be part of IndyCar. You know, they're such a great name. And, and, uh, and then to, you know, get to know George, you know, he's, it's been four years now. And uh, I remember when I met him, he couldn't even drink yet, you know, so he's that <laughs> young. And, and uh, it's been fun to watch him grow. And, and kid's very, very sharp gets it, understands racing, and uh, I think he's got a long future in the sport. And I love what you're doing now, giving back, and that's what the racing community really is all about. So let's talk about some of the auction items, because that's everybody's having a good time tonight, tuning in and watching, seeing what's available, but we're asking for you to put your bids in. So do you each have a favorite item that's up for grabs tonight? I do. I mean, the Patterson paintings are, are really dear to us. They, they do uh, painting at every event we do, and if you go and walk around our race shop, you'll see him all over our race shop. We, we, we think he does a great job, and a, it's, a, it's a very cool thing that he does. How about you, George? Uh, we got some signed jerseys, some signed balls, signed hats by some of the biggest stars, Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton, uh, Glaber Torres. So those are some items that are really cool. And then uh, we have uh, Colton's helmet that he wore at the Harvest GP that he got the podium with. Uh, that cool. So that's another cool item as well that we've got, got on deck. Helmets are fire suits. You can't go wrong, right? So, awesome. Well, we hope to raise a lot of money. We hope that you put your bids in. Thank you, gentlemen, for doing this. I know we're learning as we go, but I think this is going to be a great turnout. The Andretti and Steinbrenner families are two of the most recognizable and influential families in professional sports history, and now they've united to make a positive impact in the community. In our next segment, we'll learn more about their commitment to the Gleaners Food Bank and how your family can help make a difference too. Family in our life has been everything, you know. I mean, the sport has been so generous to all of us in our family, and uh, we've had million memories, it seems like, of, of just doing things together. In my life, my family has been the most important thing to me. Uh, we've always been very, very close and, and have always uh, shared the same ideals, a lot of the same passions, because uh, starting with my grandfather. Deep down, as long as the family was together, everything was fine. I think we could uh, deal with anything as long as we had that bond solid support group, people you can always lean on and will always take care of you and always have your back or always there for you. It is, I mean, it's the most important thing in the world. Yeah, we've always come to the, to the support of each other in, uh, in times of need. We feel very grateful that we are in a position that we can do things to try to help get back in, in any way to the communities that we race in. It's always gratifying to be able to be in a position to help someone that's less fortunate. It really was probably not until college that I realized that not everyone is raised to take care of their community. Um, I was just very lucky to be raised in a family where that is just first and foremost. It's always been important to me uh, throughout my life because of what my grandfather instilled. Uh, to, to give back to your community is a huge point of pride. It's about giving, being able to give and, and again, uh, we know how important that is. Everything that you receive in life or everything that you work hard for in life that comes to you, you pay it forward, you give it back, and that's just part of your civic duty. It's part of being a human being on the planet. It's always rewarding to be able to give back. I mean, in my opinion, that's what it's all about. 
people struggle all the time, but right now we're in a situation where people are struggling beyond belief. People are losing their jobs, people are losing their homes, people that were already living paycheck to paycheck now either don't have a paycheck or they went from two paychecks to one and they don't even know where their next meal is going to come from. Now as much as ever is um, a very important time to give back and there's no feeling like giving. We're just so grateful to have a place like Gleaners in Indianapolis that we can partner with and support that are out there every single day feeding families, providing meals, just taking care of people and helping people who really, really need it. During these uncertain times, addressing the hunger in our community has never been so important. Food is fuel for the body and the brain. A child can't grow or learn if they're hungry. In Indiana, one in four children are not able to fulfill their full potential due to food insecurity. My cars can't run on empty, and neither can a child. Join me and donate 88 and make a monthly gift today. For just 88 cents a day, you can help provide 135 meals to hungry kids. For $88 a month, you can help feed a family for a month. Help us make a difference in your community by donating today. Every donation makes a difference. Join in by using hashtag no one runs on empty. We're so grateful to all of you who have joined us here tonight. Now this is your last call to bid on all of our auction items by clicking on the items tab on this page. This is your last chance, so get those final bids in as quickly as you can before time runs out. We'd like to thank tonight's event partners, our presenting sponsor, Brightmark, as well as Firestone, Racer Magazine, Hanley Investment Group, Lusso Production Group, and Grove Holdings. Without your support, this evening certainly wouldn't have been possible. And for those of you who may not have won that auction item that you wanted, well, please know that you can still make a monetary donation to Gleaner's Food Bank. And every donation, no matter how big or small, can make a huge difference for a family in need. Please help us ensure that no one runs on empty. Once again, I'm Jamie Little, and on behalf of the Michael Andretti Foundation and the George Four Foundation, I'd like to say thank you for joining us tonight. We hope you had a wonderful evening.